friendly neighborhood sellout here. I generally make tutorials on how to install mods such as NVSE or the 4 gigabyte enabler or even Project Nevada and Eve and how to get those two to work in tandem. But today is going to be in the realm of modding again. However, this is more about how to manage your mods properly to make sure your load order is, is as efficient as it can be. The reason you may want this is if you have issues with gameplay, if you have stutter or mod incompatibilities. Quite a few of these you can see on my stream. Whenever I turn around my game hitches for a second and I, I'm confused as to why it does that. Anyway, you're going to open Nexus Mod Manager or whatever mod manager you're using. So in this case, like for example, if you open it, Nexus, you'll see whatever game you have here and then you can rescan installed games. Anyway, once you open your mod manager, you'll be greeted with this. As you can see, I have a ridiculous amount of mods. I've been doing this since uh, 2013, so I have some experience with this. These are all mods. Quite a few of them I've actually messed with and tweaked a bit. All these TTW ones I've had to m make manually with the help of the Tale to Wastelands forum. Anyway, one thing you should take note of is total plugins, active plugins, mods, installed mods, and active mods. Total plugins refers to how many plugins are in your plugin list. This is your plugin list here. So, all of these. So, you can see we have files with the extension ESM. ESM stands for Elder Scrolls Master. Note that this is Fallout and not Elder Scrolls, but Bethesda reused the same plugin listing, so whatever. ESM, and if you scroll down here, you see ESP. That stands for Elder Scrolls Plugin. The difference between a master file, such as New Vegas, and a plugin file, such as, say, New Vegas Bounties, is that the master file contains the data, and the plugin file contains an edit to the data, or a preset. What this means is that the master file will have all the the meat and potatoes of your file. So for example, New Vegas ESM, when your game loads and takes a long time, takes about 10 seconds on the main menu to initialize, it's loading this. This is New Vegas. This is everything in New Vegas. And these following ESMs are the DLC. So this essentially loads the main game and then these load the expansions. And because I have Tale of Two Wastelands, which is my favorite mod of all time, here are Fallout 3's ESMs. So this is loading all of Fallout 3. So my load order right now loads New Vegas, the expansions for New Vegas, Fallout 3, the expansions for Fallout 3, and Tale of Two Wastelands, which makes all these above work in tandem. And then you can see here I have Nevada Skies, ESM, the master file, Project Nevada, which takes up 10,000 plugins, makes me sad, and then all these other things. So you can see how ESMs are always above. I'm actually confused to how... Huh. That could be a reason for an issue. This is an ESP, yet it's higher than an ESM. There we go. This is actually an interesting error. See, this is listed as an ESP. However, it's treated as an ESM. So one thing to keep in mind when messing with mods is to make sure that there's no glitches there. For example, that's probably a glitch. Anyway, to understand your load order, you have to understand mod dependencies. A mod dependency is, if I go over here, you can see I have Project Nevada, and then DLC, Eve, and Extra Options. These depend on this. If this file is not here, these files will not function. This is the master, these are the slaves. That goes back into, let's say, 90s computer technology with PETA drives, parallel, parallel ATA. There is a slave drive and the master drive. It just depends on how data is working. So. If you want to think of it with, with the file dependencies, so for example, master and plugins. 
If you go down here, you can see I have all these mods, like say interiors, followers, MC, project combo. As you get more and more advanced with modding, like you see here, this is pretty darn advanced, um, you're going to have lots and lots of mod conflicts. And a way you can rectify that is with FNV Edit. I have a tutorial on that and I can put it in the description. FNV Edit will create a merge patch. A merge patch goes through all the master files and a few plugin files and it makes sure that there are no incompatibilities so if, if two files two mods want to change the same thing the same reference it'll prevent that or it'll find some in between for the two of them if you load up your entire load order without a merge patch say if you disable that you're going to have lots of issues, you're going to have glitches, you're going to have bugs. Generally speaking, the less plugins, the better. So if I wanted to, I could gut all this stuff. I could only have New Vegas, the DLC, 3, the DLC, Tale to Wastelands, and my game would be perfectly stable. However, as you can see, I've gone a little ahead and added every single mod I want to use, and then some, so it all depends on your preference. If you see total plugins, that's all that there is. In active plugins is whatever is being run. So when you launch the game, it has to go through 106 plugins. Generally speaking, 139 plugins breaks the engine. 138 works, 139 breaks the game. I have reached 139, and I know this from experience. Every time you reach 139, your game will stop working. So ten, try to stay below 139. And as a general rule of thumb, at least for me, I want to make sure that I'm using less than 100 plugins. I know that I'm using 106. It's because I was toying around with some mods. And to be honest, I still need to figure out what causes the hitching in the stream because it's really annoying. It's a gigantic hindrance. And please note that the total mods and the install mods are different. 87 mods yet 106 plugins. That's because some mods, like NMC's texture pack, if I go down here, like this, these are edits I had to make, a texture pack will not take up a plugin or a master slot. The reason for this is because a texture pack will overwrite textures inside the game's path. However, a plugin file or a mod that does not overwrite textures like say RSA, this is a weapon pack, this will add references to the game, a reference being like say a new item, a new location, stuff of that sort. RSA here will take up plugins. And you can see I may have, there you go, five instances of Project Nevada as a mod. If you go over to plugins, here let's do a little tally on how many Project Nevadas show up. One, two, three, four, five. Five there. And there's some more. Yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There are fifteen plugins for Project Nevada. Not that I don't have all of them selected because all DLC takes place of these, which is really handy. Helps with load order. And the Tale of Two Wastelands team for version 3.0 are going to try and merge all these plugins into one, which will be a massive boost in performance. Because the more plugins, the longer it takes to load, and the more the game is stretched out. So if you say, if you're inside a, an office building and you go back into the wasteland, your game now has to initialize everything that's outside that wasn't inside. So interior cell versus exterior cell. Exterior cell is a wasteland, interior cell is like say a settlement or a building. So if you see a big hitch when you go outside, it's because it has to load all these. If you go outside to inside, generally speaking, it loads faster because it has to load less. And the reason why it takes so very long on a main menu is because it initializes everything. Anyway, what you want to make sure is that mods that require the mods are lower than the master mod. So if you have interior lighting overhaul and it and some guy 
is a master for it, like say I have a some guy patch for it, make sure tier lighting overhaul is below it. As you add more and more mods that have intricate dependencies like Eve, which is essential visual enhancements, Project Nevada, which is a bunch of gameplay enhancements, WMX or weapon mods expanded, stuff of that sort, they all edit the same thing. An example of this is the laser pistol. The laser pistol for me is really buggy, and I, to be honest, I'm thinking of removing WMX because the general experience is really poor because they're all trying to edit the same thing. And even with the merged patch and the various patches, it doesn't exactly work the way you want it to. So, as a note, you'll see mod guides on YouTube that say, Oh yeah, install these 10,000 mods, it's gonna be a great experience, Bobby. Make sure that you're using ones that don't conflict. And if they do conflict, find a patch for it. And also make a merge patch yourself. Anyway, if you go back over here, one thing you can do for mod priority, which is entirely subjective, it depends on you, is to see what do you want 100% in your game, and what are you on the fence about. And the reason for this is because the less mods you have installed, generally speaking, the more stable the game is. So if you see here, this is a main menu replacer. This means every five levels a special increase pops up. This is faster waiting. This is a world of pain. So these two, I'm definitely going to want to use, as well as this, as well as this. These, however, are subjective. I may not care about main menu replacers. I may not care about waiting faster. So one thing to keep in mind is try to minimize your load order as much as you can. If your goal is to have a fully tricked out New Vegas like you see on a screenshot on Google Images or you see a YouTube video about Ultimate Modding Tutorial Best Graphics 2017 Overhaul If you see one of those, generally speaking, they're going to have lots of mods but they're going to focus on graphical mods and some gameplay mods. So the load order may not be as elaborate as my load order is. My load order is specifically designed to have pretty much every tweak I'd want into my game at the cost of glitches and issues. So I cannot stress this enough. Make sure that you optimize your load order. Order things properly. Make sure ESMs in the plugin list are above ESPs. And make sure that you're load order is as efficient as it can be. The more streamlined it is, the less plugins you have, and the better ordered it is, the less glitches you will have, the faster the game will load, and the more stable it will be. If you have a ton of plugins, your game will crash more often. So if you see on my streams, my game will crash between, third, between 20 and about 50 minutes. And it's pretty predictable now. The reason for that is because I have a massive amount of mods in it. So if I wanted to, I could say, I don't want main menu replacers, I don't want faster waiting, I don't care about this, I don't care about Daughters of Ares, easy hacking isn't really a preference of mine, I don't want this weapon pack, I'll keep that. Anyway, you can see where I'm going here. If you remove the mods that you don't really care for, your game will perform better, but keep in mind that you have to strike a balance between this. Some mods will actually make your game run better. It's like better performance V5 or some various patchers or enablers like 4 gigabyte enabler. 4 gigabyte enabler makes your game address more RAM, so instead of 1.5 gigs, it'll address 4 and NVSE meaning extended scripts. So almost all these mods run off NVSE which is why 4 gigabyte enabler and NVSE are so essential. Anyway, although this wasn't as hands-on as it usually is, and I didn't really install anything, this is more of a concept video. This is uh, something to wrap your mind around. So if you're new to modding, this will probably have a bigger weight on you than someone who's been doing this for years. If you're new, have fun with it, but make sure that you're doing it in a smart way. So don't don't install all the mods 
at the same time, regardless of order, because your game will most likely glitch out, lag, hitching issues, and it'll crash, and you'll have no idea what's going on. Let me see if I can make this show up. If you remove a master, a dependency file will have a... See? There you go. I just disabled Zeta ESM, and now everything that uses TTW is now in conflict. So you can see ties that bind says Zeta ESM is disabled or missing if it's not even there. If I already enable it, everything's fine. This is a really cool feature of Nexus Mod Manager in which it'll show you dependencies. So if you're missing a dependent mod, it'll be red. If it's disabled, it'll be yellow. So if your game crashes and you have an issue, you may be confused when looking at this menu and say everything has a green check, what's wrong? Go to plugins and then scroll through it and see if you see any yellow or red text. Generally speaking, it'll be red. For example, the underwater house gave me issues a long time ago and I couldn't find out why. The reason is because it opens up a, uh, a plugin that relies on an, a really old and outdated mod that's obscure. Time for bed. So generally speaking, if a game crashes on startup, it's most likely an issue with plugins. So just check to make sure everything's enabled, or if a mod is dependent on a mod you don't have, you can try and disable the plugin and see if that works. I hope this was helpful. I hope this functioned as a little guide if you're new to modding, or if you're experienced, if you want to optimize your load order and make sure your game is as streamlined as possible. To be honest, I should probably do that myself, because there's quite a bit of bloat here. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I sincerely hope this helps you in some aspect. If you're interested in more tutorials, more modding things, please let me know. And keep in mind, this applies to any game. This applies to New Vegas, Skyrim, Stalker Call of Pripyat. Every game has a load order. This just this tool, Nexus Mod Manager, lets you see it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And if you have issues, as always, I'll do my best to respond to it. I've been doing that for quite a while. So if you have any issues, please let me know. And thank you all for watching.